Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Lily, and I am so happy that you are here with me today. In today's video, we are going to make some little house envelope pockets, and I have made these over and over and over again in several different styles. And I will have those videos linked down below. So if you'd like to go see how it all got started, I have all of that information right there. In with these, I actually did something a little bit different. I used paint. So in most of the previous little houses, I have pieced them together and I have collaged them. I'm gonna grab one really quick so you can so you can have a visual, okay? So you can see what I'm talking about. So give me a second. I'm gonna reach over for a few. Okay, so I'm gonna show you what I have done in the past. And I have done collage and I have paper pieced these little houses. So you can see, and I just kind of haphazardly cut out rectangles and triangles and piece it all together. I also use the negatives from punch outs to create windows. So here is another where I've used tags in the past to create doors, frames for my ephemera kits, and then um, chipboard die cut pieces. That is a little watering can in lieu of a chimney. And so you can see here, so some of them are collage, some are paper pieces. These are some that I made in the fall. Again, just pieced went through my ephemera, my paper scraps, and little clusters. This one's pretty cool. I used a cluster here, and then I just glued it to the little roof line. Oh, these are different. These are not little houses, but these I've, I've made these with envelopes. So look at how cute these are. Okay, and so see how I've used paper with these? But with these that we are going to work on today, I decided I wanted to get painty. And I have been working with a lot of paint lately. So I grabbed a few of my favorite colors. And so I have this coral and I've had this for a few years. And one of the other reasons I'm using up a lot of my paint is I've had the paints for several years and some of them have gone bad. And so I'm trying to use up my supplies as fast as I can, you guys. And then here is my favorite folk art turquoise color. And then I have this, it's like a paint pen. And this is by Recollections also. I've had this for several years. What's cool about this is that you can draw with it or write. And so that is what I did right here. So I'm going to take all of these, all of these um, supplies or these um, elements and we are going to create one of these from start to finish. But I just wanted, um, I wanna show you in advance what the finished project will look like. And so let me just show you the ones I've already worked on off camera. I've also used words and phrases from my stickers and I already have those at the ready. And then I've used trims, I've used die cuts and other little embellishments. I drew the uh, door, so I didn't paper piece. And you can see there's like a color wash on the envelope. I'm gonna show you how I did that. I used washi tapes, lined the inside, and then used some really cute stickers. Oh my gosh, and I'll show you where those came from. And then I'm gonna show you how I made a huge mistake or how I fixed a really big mistake, you guys. And you can see that right here. And I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you how to fix mistakes because and I've said this so many times in the past, as long as we have glues and adhesives and scissors, we can fix anything. And so that is what we are going to do. I also took some note paper and then lined the back. I don't usually do much with the back, but I had some note paper and I just glued it to the back because we can always use the back for, for journaling. Or if we are using these little houses as a carrier for a gift, then we can always write a sentiment on the back and then just use some more washi tapes to embellish. So we are going to do all of that. But look at how cute that turned out. So there's one. And then this one I think is my favorite. Yes, I love this rosette trim. And these I pick up at 
at the craft stores. I know Hobby Lobby and Joann's, they carry some of this. So cute. And I drew my little houses a little different or the facade of them a little different. Normally I just do the door on the left-hand side, but I did this right here. Oh my gosh. And then I did some splatter. So we're going to do that as well. So cute. Okay. Here I painted a solid door and then outlined it with that paint pen. So cute. And I'm really, I've always loved the combination of the turquoise colors with coral. It is one of my favorite color combinations. Here are others, little pom-pom trim. So you, you can kind of tell what my favorite colors are. You can you can see it in, in my in my projects and my designs. And then here's some, I used a different shade of blue here. It's actually a combination of teals and blues and turquoises. Played around with some color. But I just love the way that looks. And then here's a couple more. So, and I used trims for this and others I have fussy cut some scalloped edges just from scraps of paper or even die cut it but I have these trims that I really like how they look. And I'll tell you where the inspiration came to use some of these little bird stickers. We had a huge snowstorm this week, huge. So I was out shoveling the snow. And while I was shoveling, I looked up, well, I could hear little birds, like little baby birds. And so I looked up, and right at the, what is it called? The, the eave of the house? The eaves, is that what it's called? I think so. Um, but there were birds, little bird nests. So our house has like this roof line. And then right underneath, like there's this, like there's a roof line here and then a roof, and then it goes, it peaks here and then it peaks here. But in between the two peaks, there's this little area. And in the corner tucked under the eaves, there was a mama bird, with her little baby chicks in a nest. Oh my gosh, they sounded so cute. They were, the little birdies were calling out for the mama birdie and it was just so cute. And I just love nature, you guys. It's just so amazing. So even though we had this huge, huge snowstorm, it was like a blizzard. There were these little birds just surviving in the snow, tucked away under the roof line, you know, of our house. Anyway, it was so cute. So, Long story short, that's where the inspiration came to add all these little birdies onto the little houses. Okay, so let's get started, you guys. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we are going to grab an envelope. And it could be a junk mail envelope. So as long as you've opened your junk mail, and I've talked about this before. Let's say this was junk mail that you received and it's got writing and stuff and addresses. As long as you trim over... the trim the edge when you open it, you just don't tear into it. You can reuse it. But I happen to have some of these number 10 envelopes. The first thing I'm going to do is I am going to seal it. So I'm just going to grab some glue and seal the envelope. That is step number one. And then the second thing we're going to do is we are going to cut an opening over here. And just a sliver, tiny, tiny bit, okay? Because we, we just want to create an opening. And then the next thing we're going to do is we are going to fold it over because when we fold it over, that is what is going to create the roof of our little house, this part right here. So let me just set this one right here so you can see it. And I fold it over. If we use this grid line so we can kind of see how much I fold over, I honestly eyeball it. I don't, I don't measure. But just to give you an idea of how much I'm folding down, it looks like two and a half inches. So that is what we are going to do. And then I'm gonna grab my bone folder and just crease that edge. So now you can see what where we're going with this. Okay. And then the next thing we are going to do is we are going to cut this flap right here. We don't need this part because now we are going to 
see how we have this pocket right here and we have to remove this section. So all I do is use my scissors and go into the sides and I'm gonna trim off this. Now remember we creased it here. I'm actually gonna go down about half an inch. And I'll show you in just a moment why. And I eyeball that. So right there, you could see how I went past the crease. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the opposite side. Okay, so what this does, and this is, this is what I love. This is a little trick that I discovered in 2020, and I have a video. I'll, I'll link that video down below. I was creating these pockets before they were little houses, and this, this part right here came all the way to the top. So you had to just, so if you were, let me show you, let me give you an example. Let me grab a tag. Okay, so here's a tag. So if we had the pocket come up to the crease line, you had to make sure that that was tucked in in order for you to fold it, tuck all the way there. And then to pull it out, imagine being like this, if that came all the way to the top like that, you can't even tell that there's something in there, right? So this is why we cut a little bit past that crease line, because then it gives you that half an inch gap so that whatever you put in the envelope or in the pocket will kind of poke through or peek through and you don't have to guess that there's something in there. It's obvious something is in there. Plus it makes it easier to pull it out and fold it and tuck it away. I hope that made sense. Okay, so that is what we are doing right here with this. And now the next thing I do, now that I've cut it past the crease, I'm going to take the flap and I'm gonna bring it forward. And it's going to stop because the, the little slits on the side are gonna stop it from going too far down. So I'm just gonna gently pull it and now I'm gonna press this down and I'm gonna line it up with the edges, okay? And then hold it and then crease it across. Do you see that? And by kind of lining it up with the edge, this is going to be even. See how I did that? And now I'm gonna cut this flap off, but I'm not gonna cut it all the way to the top, only to the crease line. To the crease line, or if I was doing a collage, I would cut it to the crease line. But I'm gonna use washi tape. I'm gonna use washi tape here to reinforce, but also to decorate that edge. So I wanna make sure that I cut that little excess flap slightly narrower than the washi tape itself. So let me show you. So do you see how I didn't cut it right at the crease line? I went a little bit over and I'm eyeballing it. And I think that will be narrower than my washi tape. Okay, that is optional. So now I'm going to seal this little flap right here, just a little bit of glue. Just to hold it down in place. This also helps by not cutting it to the very top. It helps to re reinforce this pocket right here. The washi tape will help with these edges right here. Cause when I put my washi tape across, I'm actually going to fold it over and it helps reinforce the edges right here. Does that make sense? Pretty cool. Okay, so there's that. So let me talk about the mistake I made right here. So I was on a roll, you guys. I mean, I was working on, you know, you saw all those little houses that I made, but I have more on the side that I'm still working on. So I am just trimming and snipping, you know, I'm cutting off that little sliver on the edge, just one after the next, and I set it aside, and then I walked away. When I came back, I was in a groove. So I grabbed my envelopes, but they were like this. Then I started cutting off more slivers. I'm like, I'm on a roll. All of a sudden, next thing you know, let me show you what I did. 
Next thing you know, here's my envelope, okay? Pretend that's not white. I mean, that's not painted. I had cut an opening here and I had cut an opening. An opening here. <laughs> so I made it like a sleeve. Oh my gosh. And I had to think like, okay, how am I going to fix that? There's a hundred ways to fix it, okay? I could have used a uh, glue here to, to seal that bottom. In fact, let me show you what I did. So what I had done is I had inadvertently cut all, you guys, not just one, all the bottoms, all the bottoms. See, they're all fixed. They all have stitching at the bottom. Okay. So then I accidentally cut a hole on both sides. And I was like, oh my gosh, I just gave myself more work to do. And that's okay because now I have this cute little uh, design element right here. And I like the way that looks. Okay, where was I? I had to step away for a second. Uh, I was talking about the opening here. Okay, so then I was trying to figure out how to seal it. And I could have used... I could have used just glue to seal the bottom, but then it would, it would have this rough edge. And then I thought about getting a scrap of paper and then kind of folding it over like this. And then I thought of just using washi tape and folding that over, but then I'm like, why don't I just sew it? And so that's, that's how I ended up with this idea right here. And it looks really, really cute. So that is what I did. So then, so now we're ready to move on and add some paint. Okay. So what I did is I'm going to get a little bit messy, you guys. So let me move this out of the way. And I've already cleaned my glass mat. And this, you, if you are going to give this a try, you don't have to get as messy as I did. Um, but I have a glass mat. If you don't have a glass mat, you can use a jelly plate. You can also use, um, I also have a craft mat underneath that you can do it on, or you can even spread out a plastic bag and tape it down to your surface. What we want to do is create a puddle and do like the squish method, squishy method. I don't know if that's the right term, but that is what I am going to call it. So I grabbed a little bit of paint. I know it's a lot, but it's just a little bit of paint and I'm just going to water that down. So if you looked, if you took a look, you could see that it almost looks like watercolor but it's actually just watered down acrylic paint. So I'm grabbing some water and just spray it, spray it down. And I kind of played around with the consistency a little bit. I know that I don't want it as thick as the, as it comes out of the bottle. So I kind of just test it. And I figured if it runs off of my little spatula, by the way, these are inexpensive spatulas. I picked these up at Dollar Tree and I like using them for my craft projects. And if it runs off of my little spatula, <laughs> that's good enough for me. Basically creating watercolor. I'm wearing an apron, by the way, because I've gotten a lot of paint on my clothes lately. So protect your area. So do you see, just kind of runny, but not too runny. Now this step is optional, you guys. You don't have to water it down. You could take the paint and just paint it over the paper. In fact, it dries quicker that way, and I'll show you a sample in just a moment. Because this has water in it, it will take a little bit longer to dry. And this is this is obviously not mixed media or watercolor paper. And so we're just going to do a very light color wash on this. We're not gonna go heavy because we don't want it to penetrate the paper. We don't wanna soak the paper. And it does not soak the paper, you guys. Um, it didn't go through. See if you can kind of tell. Do you see that? Because it's a very light coating on it. It's not, it's not going through or soaking through. Okay, let me get my little tray here ready. This is my tray. It's just, it's the back of a calendar. This is what I'm going to place it on and then move it over to the side so it can dry. Okay, so I took... Oh, here's another little tip. I spritzed 
the back, super light, light. And then I spritzed the front, super light, you guys. The reason I did this by spritzing the back, when I do this, whoa. When I do this, by spritzing the back, it keeps the, the envelope from curling when I set it out to dry. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So I'm going to set it down. Actually, let me tap. Woo! Let me tap some of the excess. So I'm just gonna tap a little bit of the excess. The first one will obviously have a lot more, but the next few will always have a little bit less. So there's that. Okay, I have some here at the ready. Okay, so I'm not gonna spritz the back, okay? I'm just gonna spritz the front a little bit. I'm gonna add a little more water here. That's kind of what I want. And then I'll add, I'll spritz a little bit of water just to give it more movement. And then I tap the excess off. Can you see how the paper is already curling? Yeah, and I'm gonna put it on my little tray over here. So for some reason, when I spritz the back, it lays flat, maybe because that, that mist of water is giving it some weight and it lays flat. But this one, as it starts to dry, it starts to curl a little bit. And I'll sh let's see if that happens. I'm gonna set this aside for a minute. I'm gonna do another one. I'm gonna spritz a little bit more water here. Okay, I'm not gonna spritz the back, just the front what would be like the facade. There's that. And then tap the excess. And I'm not doing this to completely cover. Oh, look, that one. <laughs> the envelope, the folding marks are on the front. And I'm okay with that. I'm not covering all of it. Um, it's okay if it shows that it is an envelope. It's kind of cool so that the recipient can see that it was made from an envelope. So I'm not too concerned about that. See how the paper's curling like that? And it's gonna dry. As it dries, it's just gonna keep curling. But I want it to let I want it to dry flat. So I'm placing it down again. So as it dries, it, it'll curl. See how it's weird. I don't know the science behind it. I just know it curls. Okay, see how the fold lines are on the back of this one and it's smooth on the front. It's okay. So I'm gonna spritz both sides because I want it to dry flat. Oh, that one turned out great. Okay. I have to grab another tray. I call them trays, but it's really just cardboard. <laughs> And I still have a little bit more. And I'm just gonna scoop it up. The lighter it gets, the better it looks, I think. Okay, just tap the excess off and I'm gonna set it aside. I think I have enough for one more. Good, because it's my last one. Okay, and I'm just gonna scoop it up. 
They're so pretty. And I'm going to clean that up. I'm just going to take an envelope. It's not ready or anything, but just so I don't waste that, that color. Okay, I'm just gonna set that one aside to dry. Okay, now that I've cleaned up the mat, my envelopes are drying, but for the sake of the video, I have these that I have already done off camera. These are already dried. Um, I also wanna point out or show you the different look. So here I did that smush color wash right here. This is diluted acrylic paint. But this right here, I went straight from the bottle with a paintbrush. This dried very quickly because it doesn't have water in it, so it was able to dry faster. This one took a little bit longer, but not, you know, not very long, just a few minutes. But I set these aside. So if you want a, a more saturated color look, you can just use it straight from the bottle. If you want more of a watercolor look, then just dilute it with water, whatever you decide. So you can see I've already done that with these. I've already stitched and these all have that opening at the bottom and I've already stitched the one that we are going to work with, okay? Okay, so I'm gonna set these aside. The next thing I did is I took a turquoise paint. This has a combination of two different turquoise and teal colors and I took my, my paintbrush and I painted the roof flap. Super, super easy. Do you want to see how I do that? Do you want to see how I do that? Let me see. Okay, I only have one of these with the window, so let me show you how I did it. So I just took... a little bit of paint and I didn't water it down and I took my paintbrush where is it I just took my paintbrush and I did put it in water okay and then to avoid making a big mess I grabbed my book. And that is what I did. Just to paint, cover the top. You know, you guys, there are there are days where I want to I want to collage and then there's other days where I just want to play with paint. So this is just another option for creativity, for design and for play. And I'm gonna go a little bit over to the other side. I'm gonna cover this up with a note paper. Good, and then down to the edge. Okay. And that's what I did. Okay, put that in my and let that dry. Okay, so now this is dry. Oh look, I didn't seal that one, so I am going to set this aside. And I'm gonna seal this little flap right here. Then I grabbed some washi tape. Oh wait, I'm almost missing a step. I need to line the inside. Cause that is what I did. See, it, it helps me to have my little, my, um, the ones I've already made as a visual so I could see what I'm doing. So let me grab the paper that I used to line the inside. I'm using a paper pad. 
because I love the way these papers are. This is a paper pad by KNC Company, and I've had this um, for a couple years. So I'm just gonna grab some paper. That one's pretty. Oh, well, it's the same one I've been using. Okay. If you have scraps, you can use scraps of paper, book page, music page. Whatever you have to line the inside. My envelope is four and one eighths of an inch wide. So I'm trying to get it just a sliver under that so it could fit in the pocket. So let's see if I did it right. Oh my gosh, I did. So I'm just gonna slide it in a little bit, just enough to cover this flap and a little bit to go inside. Okay, so now, let's see, I'm probably gonna go down a couple of inches and then line it up on the sides, okay? And now what I do, what am I going to do? I use my tape runner, you guys. Use whatever glue you want or whatever adhesive. But I've got tape runner, that's why I'm using it. I could use my glue stick. Now I've already lined it up, so I just press down. And now I will trim the excess off. If I were working on multiples at the same time, I would take this piece and put it in the next envelope as well. And that's what I did. That's what I do with all of these extra scraps. But I've used them all up. That's why I had to grab a new sheet. Okay. I need, I'm gonna adjust the lighting because it is really bright. Give me a second. Is that better? Oh my gosh. Right there, okay. All right, it's that time of the day where the lighting gets goes bright, brighter, brighter. Okay, so now I'm gonna fold that back down at that crease. And you have to trust the process, you guys. When I was first making this, I'm like, oh my gosh, they are looking so whack. I don't know if I love them. But then when I was done and you start adding all of your embellishments, oh my gosh, it was so worth it. So trust the process, you guys. Okay, so now I'm going to add the little washi tape. So am I ready to start embellishing? I think so. Because look, I've got the paint on it. I'm going to cover the back with some note paper. And all I did is... So I have my little paper pad right here. It's just a legal pad because I really like the way this looks. And... I just grabbed a sheet. And I did the same, I trimmed it down to the width, the width of my envelope. And let's see how, how long is that? I got one, two, three, four, five, six maybe six and a half, six and three quarter inches. Okay. okay there's that. And all I did is glue it to the back side. I'm gonna trim it down a little bit. I'm gonna trim it down because I don't wanna cover up that stitching. I'm just gonna take my scissors and go as straight as I can. Okay. Yep, so right there, I just glue it down, okay? And I used my tape runner for this as well.
The one thing with Tape Runner, and I've mentioned this before, it is not forgiving, you guys. So <laughs> I'm using it because I'm, I'm going through my stash, you guys. I'm going through all of the adhesives that I have. And I'm just using up my stash, my supplies. But if you use, you know, if you use glue stick, it will give you some wiggle room to reposition. But when you use Tape Runner, oh, there's no going back. Okay, so I have to be very careful. So just kind of line it up and fingers crossed, yes! Okay, so now I've got an area for journaling here. And then the other thing that I did, oh, you know what I, you know what I did? I was supposed to do the washi tape first on this side, so it goes under. <laughs> That's okay, we can fix it. Here's the washi tape I'm using. Here are my favorite washi tapes. These are, most of these are Dina Wakely washies. I just love it because it's painty and artsy, mixed media-ish. Well, it is mixed media washi that she created, and it has hearts. So I love all things hearts. So do you see how my, how that is just slightly narrower than the washi tape? It like it lines up perfectly there. And then I'm just going to fold it over. And because I did not do this before adding the note paper, I'm going to go all the way across. And now the back will look pretty. <laughs> Ta -da, see how we can just, we can easily fix things. Okay. Look at how pretty that coordinates. Look at that. Oh, okay. So now I am going to doodle my doors and the windows. Now, I did one, you guys, because if you don't have this, I want to show you that you can just use, you can use a paintbrush. And I think on one of these, I know I did on one of these, where are they? <clears throat> okay, over here. So on one of these, I just use my paintbrush, little paintbrush right here, and I just painted a rectangle and then painted a square. You can also go in there and just do an outline with your paintbrush. You can also use paint pens or markers. Whatever you have. Okay, so let's draw some wonky little doors and windows. Let me test it out first. Yep, yeah, okay. I'm gonna go over it a couple of times. Because it's not gonna be straight, so I'm not aiming for straight lines. And when you go over it a couple of times, it looks doodly and it looks intentional, like you meant it, you know, you meant for your lines not to be so straight. Now I'm gonna do a little window. And again, go over it twice. That one really went wonky. I'm gonna give it window frames. Actually, that looks really cool. It almost looks like it's a shutter. Happy accidents. Give it a little doorknob. Okay. And then what I did is I set this aside to dry. Okay, and I typically work on projects like this at night so that it dries overnight. This way, I'm not waiting for it to dry. And then the very next day, early morning, I'm ready to go because it had plenty of time to dry overnight. So I don't stress over, over things like that. Okay, now for the sake of the video, 
I'm gonna set this aside so it can dry. And I'm gonna grab one of the other ones that I've already decorated. Now this one is also one where I painted the, the door and the window with my paintbrush, but then I outlined it. You could see that outline. And this one, oh, let me show you what I used for that. Whoa, I forgot I did that. If you guys have some of these, I used Enamel Accents by Ranger, and this happens to be Wendy Vecchi's. So look at that tip. Normally with these, I've made little drops to have enamel drops, but I used it as like a fine liner. So if you have that, you could use that. Also, let me show you what else you could use. You could use Nuvo Drops. Look, what? See, you can draw with these, you guys. So you can use these and they leave, they're kind of dimensional. So that's a great alternative to this. They're basically the same thing. And I think Dina Wakely also has a line of little bottles that she uses for, for doodling with. Okay, so just a few more ideas. Okay, so that is what I did. I outlined it and that is optional. On this one, I left it as it is. So they're all a little bit different depending on what ideas I had at that moment. And then the next thing I did, okay. So now what I'm going to do, let me grab a paper clip. Okay, just so I can work with it. So it stays, so the roof line stays closed. So next I grabbed some little stickers. These are cute. These are from Hobby Lobby. They're from the Easter section and these are from this year. And I've already used some, you could see that here. So I'm just gonna take some little birds and I'm gonna decorate the front of my little house. So cute, I'm gonna add this one there. Oh, look, I wanna show you something. I haven't, I haven't shown this one. So I wanna make sure that I leave enough room right here for my stitching. But I suppose even if it goes over, it'll be okay. Cause I have different, I have different, um, di different, I have all these pieces at different stages. <laughs> okay, we're gonna add the little birdie there. And I'm gonna add a, like a, one over the door. And right there in the window. Oh my gosh, look how cute that looks. Oh gosh. And then I'm gonna add a little birdie up here over the window because you guys, it really does happen. The birds live outside of our front house. And in the springtime, we, there's a couple of doves that live in the pine trees. And then we have hummingbirds that like to come over to my parents' garden in the front yard. Tons of birds. And then there's cute little quails. Oh my gosh. You've got the, the mama or the papa quail with all the little baby quails that follow. All of that happens in the springtime and all of it happens right outside the front door. So this is true. And let's see, anything else? No, oh, that's good. Maybe add a little bit of some flowers down here. Any stickers from your sticker stash will do. Look at that. Oh my gosh, so cute. That's missing a doorknob, but we'll add it. Oh, with the little flower sticker. There we go. Whatever you have. Okay, what is next? So now I'm gonna embellish the front or the little roof. I have some trims that I've already set aside. So I'm gonna do that to it. I'm just gonna glue it down. 
Okay. And I've got this Crafter's Pick Fabric Glue. Ooh, that's too much. Oh my gosh, that's a lot. I love this rosette trim. Love it. Oh, so pretty. Look at that. Yes. And then the next thing we're going to do is add a little chimney. Okay. And some stickers. So I have, I have a little box of hearts. And these are different. What I typically do is I go through my scraps and I grab my punches and my heart dies and I just start cutting cutting up the little scraps of paper. And you can see I have book page. I have book page. I have packaging. Look at that. Packaging, scraps of paper. And they all live in here. So whenever I need a heart, I just go straight to my little heart container. So I want a glitter heart. Oh, that one. So that was quick and easy. And I am going to, I'm going to staple it down. And I'm going to use Tim Holtz's tiny attacher or any stapler you have will work. And it's going to go over that roof line just a little bit. Two staples, just like that. Okay. And then here I added a little acrylic star but I don't, I don't think I have any more. And now I'm going to add some, I'm gonna add some stickers here, just like I did over here. I have a little drawer of stickers and the reason why they're living in this drawer, I used to have them like in a card file, but you guys, these are old and, and now they have to live in a drawer because the little, stickers are falling off their sheet because they're so old they're not sticky anymore <laughs> so now they live in one of these acrylic drawers can you believe that so that's why i'm going through my supplies you guys using up my stash and putting it in everything that i create okay so let's look for one oh this one's cute this one says see it barely has sticky it says plant kindness and let's see what other one. Use one. These are great. These I bought several years ago from Dollar Tree. They are so nice. They're like a gold foil. Okay, see that? Okay. Uh, let me find one that makes, that goes along with plant kindness. Just do it. Plant kindness. Just add a little bit of glue. Woo! It's kind of long. Oh my gosh. Oh, I thought it was going to be stuck to the mat. Just a little bit of glue. And it 
it wants to lift. So I'm just gonna get one of my blocks and just place it over. Ah! <laughs> I'm so dramatic. This one. There we go, that one's better. Okay, set that for a second. What else do I need? I think that, oh, splatters. Oh my gosh, you guys, speaking of splatters. So we have talked about how much I love, how much I love, love my Heidi Swap Color Shine Gold Shine. You guys, I love this stuff so much, but I use it a lot and I don't have a lot left. And I even have a little bottle right here that I accidentally spilled the other day. Can you believe that? But guess what? Look at that beautiful color. And this is what I use to splatter on everything. And I've talked about how you can water down gold paint and use watered down gold paint, which works really well. You can also use gold watercolor. Let me show you really quick so many different options. You can also use this metallic like watercolors and then use that for splatters in lieu of this. Tim Holtz also has some really cool um, spray stain and this one is in tarnished brass. Look at that beautiful color. So you can have that. You can use this, but I love gold. I love the gold. And guess what I found you guys? Oh my gosh, look at this bottle of gold paint. It is, it's tempera, temp, tempera paint. And this one was at Hobby Lobby. It was $4.99 and it was 40% off, okay? Look at this. It is how many ounces? It's a lot of ounces, you guys. It's a lot. It's a big bottle. 16 fluid ounces. Look at that. What? So what I did, what I did is I tested it because I wanted to know how it looks how it compares to, to this one, and it works, you guys. It works, where's my little paint dish? Okay, so what I did, I'm all over the place. I'm all over the place! Okay, so I took a little bit of this. Okay, don't get it on your hands. I'm running out of space, you guys. Okay, so I took a little bit, just like that, okay? little dollop of it and I watered it down just enough to make it runny grabbed my paintbrush and I kept adding just a little bit at a time just to make it a little bit runny so it splatters a little bit okay we are going to splatter it. So basically like watercolor. Oh my gosh, look at that gold shine, you guys. Again, let me show you what that is. It is curate and color tempera paint in metallic gold. Look at all that paint, oh my gosh. That is the best purchase of this year. Okay, now we're gonna give it a try. All right, I'm gonna make a mess because that's what I do. Let me move things out of the way. I'm actually going to place it on my rag because yesterday I got paint in my coffee and I sure hope it was non-toxic because I drink my coffee anyway. Don't do that, you guys, don't do that. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna open it up because I only want to splatter. Actually, I'm not. I'm not gonna do it on this one. <laughs> no, I should. I should. Okay, it's not. It's not done, you guys, because you know it's at different stages of being completed. Okay, but for the sake of the video, I'm trying to show you all the different steps. All right. So let's see how that works. Let me cover my coffee. Oh yes, I'm standing back. Ah, yes. 
If you have a splatter box, do the spl use the splatter box. Oh my gosh. Okay, look, it's on my cup. <laughs> Ooh, yes. Can you guys see that? Oh, I hope so. I hope you can see what I can see. Anyway, it dries. Let me go grab something I've already splattered on yesterday to show you how it dries because it dries so nice. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, I grabbed some things from my scrap box. So let's see if you can see. Let's see. The lighting is tricky right now, but can you see that? Can you see, can you see? There's that. Look at this one. Oh my gosh, it just sparkles so nice, you guys. Can you see that? Oh, it, anyway, it's in, in real life, in person, you guys. That is almost identical, you guys, to the way this, this right here, the way that dries. It is a metallic gold. Look, look at that spot right there. Look at that. Look, right there, right there. What? <laughs> anyway, okay, I would pay $4.99 for this, even if it wasn't on sale. Because look at all that. Oh my gosh, I'm going to be using this on everything, you guys. Okay, where are we? So now that we've added our splatters, I'm going to set this one aside so it can dry. But look at how cute that looks right there. Can you see? Oh my gosh gosh. I love it. I'm telling you, trust the process, you guys, and you will love your creation to the very end. Okay, setting that aside. For this one, I did not use gold splatters. I used, it's kind of metallic-y. What did I use? Oh, I used, <clears throat> I used this, and I used that shade right there. I just added water and then stirred it up with my paintbrush and then added the splatters. And you've got those turquoise shimmery metallic splatters all on the front. So just use what you have, you guys. Use what you have. All right. If you guys have any questions, any questions at all, please let me know down below. If I missed anything, I had a couple of interruptions, you guys. I had um, to pause and take a phone call. I got a phone call from my parents. They are vacationing. My parents are so funny. They are vacationing in Mexico right now. And do you want to know why they called me? My mother called me to make sure that I am watering her plants. <laughs> and then my dad called me to make sure that I'm checking the mail. How funny is that? It doesn't matter. I'm 53 years old, you guys. 53 years old. My parents calling me, make sure that I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. How cute is that? Okay, so that is clean. Get that out of the way. I'm running out of room. I have no more room. I am out of room. Okay. Oh my gosh. So I hope all of this made sense, you guys. And see how I have these waiting to be completed, but I've got all of these that we've already done. So I hope that you guys have enjoyed this process. So if you don't have scraps of paper, but you want to work with paint, then you can work with paint in, in your favorite colors. You've got paint, you've got stickers, you've got trim, you've got scraps. Use it all. Use everything that you have. Thank you so much for being here with me, you guys. I appreciate you guys so much. And if you like my video, give me a thumbs up. If you love it, leave me a comment and share it with your friends. You guys are awesome. All of the information or all of the links for the other videos are down below. And I also have an affiliate link, an Amazon affiliate link. So if you would like to see a list of most of the products that I use, you can just click down below. I do have to let you know that if you do make a purchase from my affiliate link, I do earn a small commission, which in no way affects you. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. And I will see you next time. Bye.